the Animal Rescuers has been adopted by Pet Planet. There is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. So far on the Animal Rescuers, you have seen nothing but passion and principle in the caring for, adopting out, and mending of the sick and injured animals. I can say you will see nothing different on this show. In this house is a woman who we're about to meet who is passionate and caring, maybe a little body, but there is no mistaking her devotion for every animal out there. Let's go in and meet Candy, see what she has to say. Hi, I'm Candy Ziemer and I'm an animal rescuer. Hi Candy, it's such a pleasure to meet you and thank you so much for allowing us into your home. Thank you very much and I'm so excited to have you here. There seems to be a large number of Goldens in the shelters. Can you tell me if that's due to overbreeding or what is the reason for that? It is partially overbreeding. They're also one of the most popular breeds in the nation and so people adopt them when they see them as that cute tiny little puppy and they don't realize that they're going to grow into be a 70, 80, sometimes 90 pound dog that sheds 365 days a year, are sloppy drinkers, um, will chew up things, will jump on people and they turn them in because they haven't either done training with them or they just don't understand the breed. So I would think that before you adopt or uh get a golden retriever, everybody should do a background check on the breeds. Definitely. On any breed that you're thinking about adopting, make sure it fits into your lifestyle. While they can be very much couch potatoes, they do need to be gotten out for either a walk at least once a day or play ball in the yard, have some activity for them that they can do. And if you're a person that is very concerned with hair on your black clothes when you're going to work, have a lint roller by the door or in your car so you can lint roll off their, their fur. Um, put a towel down when they're drinking water and you won't have to step in that and slip and slide on the sloppy stuff. You just need to research the breeds. And so your organization is called the Golden Connection? Our group, Arizona Golden Retriever Connection, was started 12 years ago. If you notice, we don't have the word rescue in our name. Part of that reason is, besides the rescue part of what we do, we want to get golden lovers together in a connection, and we do a lot of things that just bring people, you didn't have to adopt from us, but to bring the goldens together. When we started the group, there was a lot of pet therapy going into schools, and there was a rescue component of it. Unfortunately, the rescue component, because there is such a need for saving golden retrievers, started kind of overshadowing some of the other connection parts. This year is our year in 2013 that we're going to promote much more of the connection parts, do some things where owners of Golden Retrievers can come out and try their dog at dock diving or maybe try their dog at agility and just socialize their dogs. I understand that you work with a lot of families with adoption. Do you keep in touch with all of them? Or? We keep in touch with our families for the life of the dog by our contract. If you, for some reason, your life changes and you cannot keep the dog, the dog has to to come back into us. And for everyone watching, can you please share with us how we can help? We are mainly a foster-based organization, so most of our stuff, we don't have a physical shelter that you can go to. So you can go to the website and find out information about volunteering, making donations, how to adopt a dog, and God forbid, if you need to turn your dog into us, um, all the information is on our website. Candy, is there any animals out there that's more dear to your heart than another one right now in this moment? There is a special dog for me right now, and his name is Nicholas. He was turned into the shelter. We named him Nicholas after St. Nick. We're hoping he's going to be our Christmas miracle. A couple weeks before Christmas, we found him in the shelter. He has a very, very large growth on his face. At this point, we're not sure what that growth is. We're really hoping it's not cancer and that we'll be able to remove it. But he only weighs 44 pounds, and he should probably be about a 70-pound dog. So we're dealing with some of his body weight issues, and anemia, he had ticks all over him. Um, we finally have the ticks gone and we're hoping that he starts regenerating some red blood cells and can get healthy enough to go through the surgery to have this growth removed from his face. Oh, poor Nicholas. Well, we are certainly keep him in our thoughts and prayers and, and we have to follow the story on Nicholas to see what's going on with him. You are more than welcome because I want everybody to see the day that he has that off. He's a very, very handsome boy, and after you get to know him and find out how sweet he is, you kind of don't see what's on his face. This is 
going to be day seven that we've had Nick uh, out of the uh, out of the kennel. He's doing awesome. He loves to go for runs and walks and plays with the other dogs that we have here in the house. He's starting to gain uh, some weight back. We've got about seven pounds since he went into the uh, the kennel at, in the first point, and uh, all of his uh, incisions are healing up awesome. When we first met Nick up at the medical clinic, we had a hard time getting his tail to wag. Now he's walking around the house, wagging his tail all the time. When the dogs bark, he wags his tail. He comes over to greet us, wagging his tail. His spirits are good. Well, thank you, Candy. Thank you so much. And we'll check back about Nicholas. Terrific. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. Why does pet loss come with such a bewildering, life-changing cost? The pet bond can be so great that a person can feel lost. Life and Pet Loss Coaching can help empower healing grief work. Hi, my name is Dan Crenshaw, and I am a Life and Pet Loss Coach, author, and presenter. Empowered by courage, you can come to terms creatively with grief at your own pace with dignity and grace. I can partner with you to help you experience both healing and motivation. Then you can be free to live a purposeful lifestyle with greater passion and excellence. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. Sonnet Jarvis has been a veterinarian for 14 years. Then she decided to pursue her dream of opening and operating her own rehabilitation clinic. She is well known in the rescue community for her tireless efforts in treating the sick and injured back to health. She completes a whole body evaluation of the dog and then tailors a treatment plan for each. I found that when I was in general practice, I would get very excited when I looked at the schedule and I would see these overweight or arthritic dogs come in or these dogs that were limping you know, had issues like that, these musculoskeletal issues and I found that that's what I really enjoy doing. I get very excited when they come in and I used to talk to the staff members and my employees and such and, and they would jokingly tell me that I was going to have a doggy fat farm someday. Um, and at that point in time, physical rehabilitation was just being created in veterinary medicine. It was a brand new concept um, that in, in a different part of the U.S. was being developed, but I hadn't heard about it. So it was just something that I enjoyed doing, working with these overweight arthritic dogs, get them to lose weight, build up some muscle mass, and the achiness got better. And I found that they didn't hurt as much. And I decided that I wanted to, to go ahead and pursue doing the physical rehabilitation. I looked into it, there was actually a school that was created to, to teach veterinarians how to apply physical therapy techniques to dogs. Um, and at that point in time, I, I, I hesitated, I waited, um, life got in the way, you know, I had a family, so it really, really wasn't the right time for me at that point in time. So I, I put it on the back burner for a couple of years, but it was always there in the back of my mind. So I finally committed to pursuing that dream. My kids were a little bit older and they were starting school and I had a little bit more uh, time to focus on the, the schooling, the education that was required in, in learning that. And I finished that up and decided to go for it. And here I am and I have my own physical rehabilitation clinic for dogs now. And I do weight loss programs so I can do my doggy fat farm now. <laughs> and I help these old overweight arthritic dogs and I help these young limping dogs and I help dogs of all ages now to gain muscle and reduce pain and increase their mobility and overall improve their quality of life. And my goal is to take each dog, minimize pain and maximize potential. I'm located here in Glendale. I work out of Groomingdale's pet grooming shop. 
have a, a room here in the back, um, but I'm also set up for house calls. So I can come anywhere in the valley, and if you have a pool, I can do aquatic therapy. Uh, if you have a park nearby or a yard, we can incorporate that into your pet's physical therapy, basically. When I do an evaluation, uh, basically examine the dog from head to toe, and I'm looking for both primary problems and compensatory or secondary issues as well. So this is Benny, and he's our producer's dog, and the producer has some concerns because Benny doesn't seem to be as strong in the back legs as his other dog is. He's noticed that when he pushes on the, the back side of the dog that Benny tends to sink down, whereas his other dog can stand and support the weight properly. So we're gonna take a look at Benny and see if we can figure out what's going on. All right, Benny, can you stand up for me? Come on, Benny, come on. There you go, good Benny, good Benny. Stay right here, good. Good. So we're just going to put a little pressure on the spine and see if we can find any tenderness or weakness. So that was mid-back. That's a really common area for some tenderness. There's a lot of mobility in the spine there. And we found another spot. Okay. So he told me several times that, yes, he's trying to move away from the pressure that I'm putting on his spine. And he's doing that by either walking away from me or by sitting. I want to find out what are the primary issues and then what are the secondary issues so that I can address all of those and retrain the dog on how to use the body properly. The first Pet Planet store opened in 1996 after the devastating loss of our Cocker Spaniel to cancer. What we learned then about pet health was eye-opening. The food and the treats that we were giving him did not support his immune system and may have actually harmed him. Pet Planet was established to be a community resource, a store that offers only the healthiest products and the best knowledge on pet health issues. At Pet Planet, there is nothing more important to us than your pet's health. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of my heart and I tell the women in my life to do the same. Sounds great, by the way. That's nice, sweetie, but that's not my heart. That is. Find out more from the American Heart Association at goredforwomen.org. Welcome back to the Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. Gretchen and Cheyenne are two and a half year old sisters that are a bonded pair and must stay together. They have what is called a half mask and each has one blue eye. Very beautiful markings. Their dad passed away unexpectedly and their mom was now having to work very long hours and they really wanted the girls to have a home where somebody would be there for them. The mom was in tears when she turned them over to the rescue. Both love people of all ages and also like other doggy friends. Cheyenne is the more rowdy of the two, and both like playing keep away and going for car rides. Uh, Booster is one of my dogs. He, in fact, does not wait for his food. So today, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get your dog to wait for its food and to show um, the, what, what you can expect to get your dog to wait for its food. Last week's training tip, was crating, teaching your dogs how to crate. And I mentioned in that segment last week, I mentioned um, that we were going to feed the dogs in their crates just to make sure that the crate ends up being a happy place for the dog. So if they're getting their food in there, which most dogs enjoy eating food, if they're eating their food in there, it makes it a happy place. So today we're gonna show, or Booster's gonna show, how to wait for your food. He's already crate trained. So we've already, let's say we've already crate trained our dog this week or got them acclimated to the crate. And I'm just, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some kibbles or treats into the bowl of food. And he's waiting in his crate. And I'm going to go to put the food bowl down. When I go to put the food bowl down, he's gonna try to get it. When he tries to get it, all I'm simply going to do is to take it away from him. You notice I'm not saying anything to him. I could say no, 
But again, I want it to be his idea <clears throat> that he waits for his food. He goes to get it. I have to release him to get his food. So I put the food bowl down and take, I want to be able to take my hand away from the food bowl also. Good boy, okay. Good boy. <laughs> and I would also like him to look at me. He was a little conflicted at staring at his food bowl versus looking at me and then he ended up looking at me through the tops of his eyes. <clears throat> so I'm gonna give him another opportunity. So I might put half of his food in there and then let them eat it and then put the other half of the food in there and do the same thing again. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, free. Good. And then I release him to his food. It's a very, very simple thing to do. Um, and a lot of people don't do it. And, and my, my thing is with waiting for their food, it's such an easy way for me to be in control without having to physically force my dog into doing something. Stay tuned to the animal rescuers for next week's training tip from Villa La Paz, which is going to be having your dog demonstrate self-control in some exercises you can do to get your dog to show self-control. Do you trust the food you feed? At Pet Planet, our commitment is to helping our customers navigate through the confusing world of pet food, reading ingredient panels, asking critical questions about manufacturing and ingredient quality. Our pets rely on us to make the very best decisions we can for their health, happiness, and longevity. Pet Planet is here as your partner in pet health because there's nothing more important to us than your pet's health. It started out like a totally normal day. I love you. I mean, I guess I was a little sweaty and I was definitely sore. I thought I had gas. Turns out I was having a heart attack. Heart disease is the number one killer of American women. So now I take care of my heart and I tell the women in my life to do the same. Sounds great, by the way. That's nice, sweetie, but that's not my heart. That is. Find out more from the American Heart Association at GoRedForWomen.org. Hi, I'm Jen, and this is Pet Planet's Pet Tip of the Week. As pet guardians, we want to provide your dogs with things to chew on. It's your dog's natural instinct to chew. So satisfying this need is not only important to their mental well-being, but also helps to develop strong muscles in their jaw and helps to keep your dog's teeth clean. One thing that loving pet guardians often do not realize is that rawhide is very dangerous to your pet's health. Rawhide is not digestible and when swallowed, will swell three to four times its size in the liquid environment of the stomach. These swollen pieces are not digestible, so can get lodged in the digestive tract, resulting in injuries from stomach upset to complete blockage that will require immediate emergency treatment. Additionally, during the manufacturing process, rawhide is treated with toxic chemicals such as lime solution or bleach. These are highly caustic to your pet and should be avoided at all costs. Now that you understand the dangers of feeding rawhide, you're probably asking yourself, well, what is the safe alternative? Here at Pet Planet, we strongly recommend a beef chew. This is just the muscle that's been fully dehydrated. It's 100% digestible and it's low in fat. So for those of you who are looking for a low calorie treat for your pet, this is a great option. It comes in a variety of shapes and sizes that every pet's gonna love. You have a basic stick, you have braided chews that tend to last a little bit longer, and then also, beef chews that are in a curly shape, again, that are gonna to help to last a little bit longer. Stay tuned each week for another Pet Planet Pet Tip. There's more of the animal rescuers coming right up. Why does pet loss come with such a bewildering life-changing cost? The pet bond can be so great that a person can feel lost. Life and Pet Loss Coaching can help empower healing grief work. Hi, 
My name is Dan Crenshaw, and I am a life and pet loss coach, author, and presenter. Empowered by courage, you can come to terms creatively with grief at your own pace with dignity and grace. I can partner with you to help you experience both healing and motivation. Then you can be free to live a purposeful lifestyle with greater passion and excellence. Welcome back to The Animal Rescuers, adopted by Pet Planet. One of our best yearly holiday traditions is the 12K Run. At Freestone Park in Gilbert, a record number of dogs and runners showed up to run for the benefit of the animals. There were dogs aplenty, food, merchandise, and Pet Planet was there. Many rescue groups were represented with animals up for adoption during the event. Oh yeah! There were a few races as well. My wife and I, Kathleen, uh, we dreamed up this event about four years ago. Uh, what we wanted to do is we wanted to bring the spirit of Christmas back and do an event that's uh, going to celebrate Christmas and at the same time do something that's going to make a difference for the animals that are uh, being left out in the cold. With all the turnaround, uh, with uh, the, the market, with the homes, there's a lot of cats, dogs that are just being left in in apartments and homes, it's, it's terrible. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to help raise money. So a portion of the proceeds are going towards Maricopa County Animal Care and Control and our wonderful friends from Pac-911. Here we are at the 12 Ks of Christmas and we're enjoying the nice, cool, damp weather today, but we're not complaining. We love it and we're here with about 35 PAC partners. Um, hopefully we'll have some adoptions today. We're selling some wonderful pack products and we're having a great time at the 12 Ks of Christmas. We at the Animal Rescuers wish you a happy and prosperous new year. This is Kimberly reminding you that it only takes one to do something great. You can be the one. Volunteer, donate, adopt. And you can be an animal rescuer too. See you next time. The long and winding road. You don't like the start? I like it, but I just wanted to change the shot. Just do it. Okay. I'm the director, just listen. Go. I'm not getting enough money. <laughs> Hi, I'm Candy Zemer, and I'm an animal rescuer. <laughs> yada yada yada. <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> yada yada yada. <laughs> That's my plan. Yeah. So my goal is to minimize pain and maximize potential. Yeah. Uh,
<laughs> I want to minimize pain and mash potatoes. <laughs>